in Formula One, you need to be able to adapt. When you need to be aggressive, you need to be aggressive. When you need to be smooth, you need to be smooth. When I'm in the car, I will never give up. Well, the North American sports market has long been dominated by big team games, football, basketball. Of course, Canadians love their hockey, but the business of Formula One earns top marks for gaining its own seat at the table. Not that it's new, of course, but some savvy marketing as well as the popularity of a Netflix program have boosted fan interest so much so that we're now seeing special events created for fans that exist away from the big races themselves. The F1 exhibition is one example of that. The fan experience makes its North American debut coming up in May in Toronto. Toronto native Jonathan Linden has worked on all sorts of live events over the years. He's one of the exhibition's producers. He joins us here in studio. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. This has been a really fascinating story to watch. The, the rapid fan growth for Formula One. Again, not a new sport, no. but, but one that really has come into the spotlight in, in a big way. First of all, why do you think that is? Well, I think it's it's a, it's a it's a global sport, and it's yeah. been growing for years. I think the the challenge for some sports is how do you break into new markets? And for the North American market, you mentioned Drive to Survive, which is a Netflix series that really uh, provided the exposure for the for the brand and for the sport in a way that. Uh, changed things over the last number of years and got people to be able to know the drivers and the characters and the elements a little better. And that's been a real uh, benefit for the sport in North America. Yeah, and, and you've done all sorts of live events mm. over the years, but I, I would imagine in some of those cases, you know, if it's based around a singing talent or something else, if there's a big TV show or a big movie or a big album, those can be catalysts towards growing the business in other ways. There's no doubt whether it's uh, whether it's a children's and family brand, whether it's a band, whether it's whatever it is. It's always helpful that there's something new and fresh. And the the element of uh, of Netflix is it's it's constantly fresh. It's all it's always coming out. And the element of F1, there's always new champions. There's new teams. There's it, it, the story is constantly being told and constantly unfolding, and that's um, a great ability for us to tell that story as part of the exhibition. Now the fact that. You know, I, I mentioned there's all these big team sports in North America that have big fan bases as well, but people can go to those games on a relatively normal basis. Is the fact that sometimes it's hard to get to an F1 event, does that maybe open the door for you with a, an event like yours? It was definitely part of the thesis when we put this project together, that there's there's a lot of F1 fans. As you say, there's there's some core F1 fans, and then there's some more recent F1 fans. But there's a bit of a barrier to entry in that there's a set number of races. There's a scarcity of product. A lot of those races are in very specific geographies. And ticket prices, as it has become more popular, have become uh, a little more expensive, a little tougher to come by. And so the opportunity to be able to celebrate and engage with F1 uh, is, it was an opportunity we viewed as very attractive. So uh, what goes into deciding what makes the exhibit shine if you're trying to th and, and, and obviously you've had experience with this and 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 even over the last few years especially during the pandemic you, you saw a lot of new creative thinking about interactive shows and things like that so i guess we've got a lot to work with but what did you conclude would make sense for the fan experience i think it's a combination of catering to some of the the core fans people who have been following the sport for for quite a while they want to see a lot of the elements of the history of the sport they want to see cars, they want to see uniforms, they want to see helmets, they want to see all the things that go into it. But obviously, as you say, over the last number of years, there's a lot of uh, experiences that are immersive and experiential and have advanced technology. And so consumers today really want to see that. And so we think we've got a, a nice marriage of uh, history, historical elements, ability to really bridge the knowledge gap with new fans and let them know all the history of the sport and how it works but also some really exciting and engaging immersive elements. We've got a, uh, a fully immersive theater that's part of the exhibition that's really technologically advanced, and that's what consumers today are, are looking for. So this is um, an experience that uh, in Europe fans have had a chance to uh, uh, check out. Why did you pick Toronto uh, as, a, as a landmark in North America to get started? We, we opened in Madrid last year, and we're in Vienna right now, uh, and that set is proceeding through Europe. And so this is a separate North American set that we're very excited about. And we're, 
launching in Toronto, aside from, from being from Toronto and being yeah. very proud to be here, Toronto is a incredibly dynamic entertainment market. And uh, a lot of projects do very well here. There's a very diverse audience. There's, there's people from all around the world who, that, which includes more recent F1 fans and more historical F1 fans. And it's a, it's a mature market for this type of event. Uh, Toronto has launched a lot of exhibitions and experiences, and there's uh, a fan base that have uh, uh, an expectation of what they're going to see. And so we're incredibly excited for this market. Interesting. And, 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 and so what more do you want to do? Does this, does this become, are, are you taking the temperature right now in Europe and then here in May with the Toronto performance to see if this is something that you'll, you'll continue to take to other locations? Well, the, the expectation is the European set continues to tour through Europe, and, and this set after Toronto will continue to tour through North America. We haven't announced the next market yet, but we're, we're excited to do that in, uh, in short order. But this, uh, the, the hope and expectation is that both sets have a, uh, a long time frame to play and, uh, and get to new markets and engage with F1 fans. All right. Does this? I guess the big question: Does this? Uh, uh, what have you learned uh, about F1 that you didn't know before in getting ready for this 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 big show? I think that it's. Uh, I think one thing is is just how innovative from a technological perspective, mm. and these the teams uh, getting a chance to interact and spend time with them. They spend so much time on what's next and the innovations. Those innovations permeate down to the cars that we drive. There are so many car and automotive and motor racing enthusiasts that uh, seeing those elements is incredibly exciting. And it's, it's fun to see a sport that is, uh, it's truly global. It translates in, uh, in so many different culture, countries and cultures. And so um, we're excited.